And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs. A time when a special man came forward, a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear, a man whom they took prisoner and hid away, a man whose name is Yahweh bin Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh bin Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh bin Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, shall you hey wav hey. The universe of you hey wav hey. Brought to you by the nation of you hey wav hey. Working for you and your future. Good or evil? Life or death? This is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the day of judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse, and it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end the Messiah would be revealed, and at that time he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh In order to have peace, love and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws and statutes of God Yudhe Wave, 
then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayil Bethel Yishraya. We are discussing the commandments of Yahweh. The first two commandments ever given to man were given to Adam, which were to dress and to keep the Garden of Eden. We are now discussing the second commandment, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. Let us review a few of the important facts that we shared with you last week. We learned that keep means beware, and we documented that beware means to be on the lookout and to be on the alert. When we examine these definitions carefully, we found out that to keep the Garden of Eden, Yahweh commanded Adam to always keep watch for someone that may come or something that may happen. He also commanded Adam to have a ready and prompt attentiveness to whatever he heard or saw that was approaching or taking place in the Garden of Eden. And even more, Yahweh commanded Adam to exercise quick intelligence of his, Yahweh's laws, in assessing situations and in making right decisions. We learned why Adam was commanded to do these things in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Yahweh commanded Adam to do these things because in the Garden of Eden was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yahweh commanded Adam not to eat of this tree because if he did, he would surely die. We define the word tree and learn that it is used here as a metaphor. We documented that tree in Hebrew is ayin to sadi sofit, pronounced eights, and it means to fasten or make firm, that is, to close the eyes shut. Tree is used as a figure of speech to describe a family of people who have the ability to fasten or firmly close the eyes shut. Adam was commanded not to eat from the knowledge of these people. We read Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 through 5, which told us that when such people arise among us, we should not hearken unto their words, but rather we should obey and walk after the way of Yahweh only. Since the people who represent the tree of the knowledge of good and evil have the ability to firmly shut the eyes, we carefully examine the word eyes to get an understanding of what it really means. The word eyes by definition means the center of light, intelligence, etc. Light was defined as mental illumination, knowledge, information, enlightenment. So tree is a word used to describe a people who have the ability to fasten or firmly close or shut one's mind from being illuminated. To fasten or firmly close or shut one's mind from receiving knowledge, information, or enlightenment of the laws of Yahweh. Without the knowledge of the laws of Yahweh, we shall surely die. Today, we will continue our discussion of the second direct commandment that Yahweh gave to man, Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden, heaven.
documented in the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, copyright 1990, in the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary, on page 118, reference number 8104, keep in Hebrew is shamar, and another meaning is be circumspect. The verb be means to exist or live. Circumspect is an adjective, and an adjective is a class of words that adds to the meaning of a noun to describe a quality. The Oxford Study Dictionary, copyright 1991, on page 558, defines quality as a characteristic, something that is special in a person. Thus, Yahweh commanded Adam to understand that in order for him to exist or live in the Garden of Eden forever, he must be in an unrelenting, conscious state of mind. How? By continuing in the special character or quality of being circumspect. Last week, we learned that in order for Adam to keep the Garden of Eden, he had to beware of the tree, which we learned is a metaphor for people, that would come to him in the Garden of Eden with the ability to mentally illuminate or enlighten his mind with knowledge that was mixed with good and evil. We also pointed out in the scripture that Yahweh told Adam that if he ate of this knowledge, it would firmly close his spiritual eye, meaning his mind, to the knowledge of the laws of Yahweh, which would surely cause him to die. Before we discuss be circumspect, let us open our Bible and read Genesis chapter 2, verse 17 again. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Notice there are two very critical statements in this scripture. Thou shalt not eat, and in the day that thou eatest. The primary focus in this scripture is the word eat. Obviously, to eat something that will cause death is not wise. To not be wise describes a character that lacks the ability to discern. To discern means to come to know or recognize mentally. Therefore, in order for Adam to come to know and recognize mentally that he should not eat from people who simultaneously speak good and evil, he first had to have an understanding of the word eat. Let us now deal with the word eat. In accordance with the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, in the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary, on page 12, reference number 398, eat in Hebrew is spelled from right to left, Aleph, Kaf, Lamet, pronounced or call. Referenced in Chambers' 21st Century Dictionary, copyright 1996, on page 415, eat means to absorb, to listen with real interest. On page 5, Absorb is defined as to receive or take something in as part of oneself. A synonym for listen is heed someone's words. Heed is equivalent to follow. Thus, Adam was commanded not to receive or take any knowledge of good and evil in as part of his character. He was also commanded to not even listen with any real interest to anything those speaking good and evil had to say. Furthermore, Yahweh commanded Adam not to follow the words of people who came speaking good and evil. And even more, Yahweh warned Adam that if he did take on this character, 
the character of deception, he would surely die. Now that we have an understanding of the word eat, let us focus our attention on be circumspect, which is the meaning of keep. On the authority of Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, copyright 1989, on page 242, circumspect means careful to consider all circumstances and possible consequences. Circumstance is described as a piece of evidence that indicates the probability or improbability of an event as a crime. Consequence means the same as result and outcome. Yahweh commanded Adam to be careful to consider all pieces of evidence that indicate the probability or improbability of actions that could result or be the outcome of him receiving and listening with interest to any knowledge from people speaking good and evil. Let's look at the word circumspect from yet another point of view. Stated in the Synonym Finder by J. I. Rodale, copyright 1978, on pages 169 and 170, circumspect is synonymous to cautious and prudent. Cautious implies being watchful. Prudent means to be wise, exercising good judgment. Therefore, Yahweh commanded Adam to carefully consider all of the testimony of people approaching him in the Garden of Eden by being forever watchful of their statements so he could carefully weigh the probability or improbability of the outcome of their words. At the same time, Adam was commanded to know what may happen or what may occur as a result of their good and evil statements. Moreover, Yahweh commanded Adam to exercise good judgment in assessing knowledge from people speaking good and evil, and that he must base all of his judgments on the laws of Yahweh. This prudent wisdom is verified in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 8, which reads in part, The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand the way of the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of Yahweh. To keep the Garden of Eden, Yahweh commanded Adam to be circumspect so he would come to readily know and to immediately recognize the tree, the people, who would come speaking good and evil. And Yahweh commanded Adam to not take on their deceptive character, but rather to keep his tongue from evil, which is in accordance with Psalm chapter 34, verse 13, which reads, Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Just as Yahweh commanded Adam to keep his tongue from speaking evil, we, as the seed of Adam, are commanded to do likewise. We are commanded to speak only that which is good. We will talk more about this subject next week as we continue our discussion of the second commandment that Yahweh gave to man, Adam, in the Garden of Eden, which was to keep it. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the enlightened one is here. I bear witness, I bear witness to you today that the one all religions have been speaking of for over 6,000 years, 
6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the Nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. As prophesied in John chapter 1 verse 49, Yahweh Ben Yahweh is a rabbi, spiritual leader, educator, teacher, scholar, and writer and he is qualified to rule on all questions of the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of Yahweh. He is the master, the son of Yahweh, king of Israel. Hear, O daughter of Zion, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, so-called black man of America. Behold, our king has come unto us, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat the foal of an ass, and he is clothing us in righteousness. Blessed is the king that has come in the name of Yahweh. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Luke chapter 19 verse 38. The Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, has come forth. He has come forth as a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch is growing out of his roots. Remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. It's all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> That just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleichem. Out of Judah 
the so-called black man, the Messiah, Yahweh bin Yahweh, has come, and he shall be the ruler of Israel forever. For the seven spirits, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, might, knowledge, fear, and the spirit of Yahweh have rested upon Yahweh bin Yahweh. And with his quick understanding, Yahweh bin Yahweh is judging the poor with righteousness and slaying the wicked with the breath of his lips. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikar Deshemeyaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Yiase Razonka, Kivashemayim Kain Baaret, Et Lekum Kukainu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu, Ah Kati Enu, Kimosha Sol King, Gamanak Nu, La Koteom La Nu, Vea Tefie Nu, La De Nisayom, Kim Kal Se Nu, Min Hara, Killer Ka, Hamumlaha, Veha Givera, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and his Son Yahweh bin Yahweh love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem. To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, ask about the special discount on Yahweh, the ineffable name. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen.